Hey guys, me again. Today we are talking about the final part of experimental design, exciting times, part four. We're gonna talk about all the writings that you're gonna have to do at the end. Once you've collected all the data and then all the procedures, you pretty much know what exactly is going on. And now it just includes a lot of thinking and quickly coming up with rationales and things like that. Okay, let's get started. The first thing you're gonna do is analyze all the statistics and data that you collected and calculated on your calculator. Um, this year they put this new um, requirement in of using CER format. If you have taken honors chemistry um, already or any science classes above that level, you know what CER is. Um, if you have it, it is a structure called claim evidence reason to help organize your argument um, if you're telling people something in a very uh, convincing or reasonable manner. So uh, three things you need to hit on for this part. First of all, statistics. So what you're going to talk about is the range within each trial that you calculated for the statistics part. Um, and then you're going to say, overall, the statistics are pretty consistent, or maybe they're not very consistent. Second thing you're going to say um, is you're going to list out all the ranges that you calculated for um, uh, the statistics part and then say well as you can see from here uh, the range was like 2.5 which was not a lot and considering the big numbers that I got or maybe um, the 2.5 is a huge range because all the other numbers are actually from like 0.5 to 0.7 which reminded me it might be also a good idea to uh, touch upon the minimums and maximums that you calculated for previous part just so you can back yourself up a little more and then the reason in this what I just said with the comparison and telling people uh, how or why the ranges mattered and how that can um, help you claim oh yes this is consistent or this is not so the outliers should be the one um, data point that got circled out when you are creating the data table it is uh, either abnormally high or abnormally low and then that's kind of mess up your data so you're going to say the unusual data point occurred at trial number blah level number blah and uh, quickly touch upon why it might have been like this maybe somebody spilled water um, or maybe uh, something screwed up so be creative and then how it became an outlier as in while say all the other uh, numbers were 1.0, this one is 5.0, you can just tell that this does not belong in this data set. So um, do your CR for that. And then for data trend, you are going to talk about the linear correlation, the line of best fit that you got, and especially the R value that you calculated and copied down for your statistics. How linear is it? If the number is very close to one or is exactly one, then the graph is perfectly linear, which is not going to happen because you're doing an experiment. But if it's in the 0.9 region, you can argue that it is very highly linear, excuse me. If it's in the 0.9, you can say, yeah, it's pretty linear, um, and so on. So what you're going to say is, yes, the data trend is very linear. Um, the R value calculated from the line of best fit is 0.967, blah. Um, and as we, can, as we know, uh, the closer it is to 1, the more linear it is. And, 0.96 is very close to 1, so it is going to be very linear. Okay, and then we move on to possible experimental errors. So um, this year, I think it's a little easier, or maybe we just did an overshot for the past couple of years. One specific error and two specific, so two total errors need to be identified um, and discussed. Um, so you need to take note that errors are not human mistakes. So. It's not something like, I spilled water, oh no, you totally, that was not necessary and it is totally evitable. It needs to be something unavoidable given the situation that you were in. For example here, um, say little salt particles, if you're testing solubility of salt in water, water um, little salt particles can linger on the measuring spoon when they're transferred into the cup with the water. So the actual amount of salt that is dissolved in water is a little lower 
because not all that you measured out is going to be um, in the cup, and which means that this will make the calculated solubility of salts um, higher than the actual value because not all the salt went into dissolving in water. So you need to do two of those. Um, explain yourself, think, think through it logically, um, and come up with your estimate. Is this going to be an overestimate or underestimate? Um, or maybe the calculations are going to be whack, something like that. And then this year, big change this year is they split up the previous conclusion into two parts. And the conclusion listed here is going to be a lot easier. So you are just going to talk about whether or not your hypothesis is consistent with your result. So uh, again, it's using CER over here, helps you organize your stuff. First of all, say, yes, my hypothesis is consistent with my result, or no, it is not. And then you need to explain your reasoning. So evidence saying what my hypothesis was, um, and then showing your results. So say my hypothesis is that um, no, soap is not soluble in water. And then my um, evidence would be, look at the solubility in here. Um, it shows that very low solubility, like 0.1 gram out of 100 grams of soap uh, was dissolved in water. Or maybe when I used 100 grams of soap, hoping that it would all dissolve, there were 99 grams remaining, which means that very little dissolved. So no, my hypothesis was correct. Um, the linear equation or whatever evidence I have is contradicting what I claimed or supporting what I claimed and that's how um, my con uh, my hypothesis is consistent or is it not and if it's if you're using a linear equation you can say see here as something increases the other thing also increases which means blah which is consistent which is um, the same as what we claimed in the hypothesis um, and then the major chunk a very important part here is the abstract, which was part of the conclusion the years before, but now it's on its own, which is more um, consistent with the actual scientific reports if you were to step into the real world and read those scholarly papers. So um, if you can think about it, you can think about it this way. It is how you would describe this experiment to someone else in 45 seconds. You are not going to go into the detail of, oh, we pulled out three colored cups or whatever. You are going to tell them what the experiment is about. Um, we wondered how something would affect something. Um, and our hypothesis was blah. And we investigated this relationship or in this topic by uh, doing such and such, some major steps in your um, procedure. Uh, by dissolving salts, different amounts of salt in water to test the solubility, something like that. And then um, including major findings and conclusion, as in we found out that something is in keeping with blah, our hypothesis was correct, it was not correct, and we realized that this thing does this, that things, that, uh, those things does that, blah, blah, blah. So it is very important. Um, ideally, I'll show you a couple of abstracts from um, actual scientific articles, if that will help. Um, and yeah, basically just skim through what you did if you were to talk to some of your friends after the, uh, the event uh, on November 16, and they were like, oh yeah, what did you do for experimental design? Whatever you will tell them is what you're going to write for the abstract. And then the last part, woohoo! applications and recommendations for further use. It's basically three main chunks. First of all, um, are there anything from this experiment that you wish would be better? Maybe for, um, you only had a meter stick, but you wish to have some really, really fine, uh, precise measurement devices. Um, that's something, a suggestion to pr improve the experiment. Um, it helps eliminate the sources of error, or you can get better data points out of those, or maybe there was a very hazardous move that you had to do that you don't have to do, maybe by doing so and so. Second of all, um, suggestions for practical applications of experiments. So um, how can you use the conclusion from the experiment in real life? If you're talking about temperature, 
maybe you realized, oh yeah, baking soda and vinegar decreases temperature a lot. You can use that, I don't know, to cool things down. Maybe um, the gas you can use to uh, for cooling devices, to build refrigerators. I'm just spitting out ideas now. Um, and then the third is future experiments. So maybe you've already um, studied baking soda and vinegar. What's the next step if you're doing a big, big science project on thermal dynamics and you talked about baking soda and vinegar? What's your next thing that you're going to study? What's the next experiment following this one to further the investigation of the topic? Maybe you're talking, oh yeah, uh, I want to see if baking soda can re decrease temperature and everything else. Maybe I will not use vinegar, I'll use, I don't know, um, nail polish or something, right? Applications and recommendations um, is the perfect chance for you to address any flaws uh, that you had in the experiment um, or confusions and questions that you had while conducting the experiment. So, which means that you really don't have to freak out if you came uh, stuck at one point when you're doing the experiment because um, the point where you were stuck will be put into good use when you're talking about applications and recommendations. So yeah, that's it guys. All four parts. We are done lecturing about experimental design and it's just now time for more practice. Um, so if you have any questions on how to write, how to do any part of the experiment, uh, experiments of design this event as a whole, please let me know, ask me questions, shoot me emails I can explain to you in person, maybe shoot some further videos to um, explain any any confusions you might have or clarifications, questions, whatever you need. So just let me know. Thanks! <laughs>